You will never decenter men until you stop believing that the deity you worship is male. Oh my God! She just said she got it. She know it. What, she just got it. She what do you mean? Religion is masculine. This is why they tell you that God is a man because masculine mind mend. It actually blocks you from your heart. Gender happened to God without God's consent. Why do we consider God to be a man? Throughout history, many religious traditions and texts have referred to God using masculine language or imagery. Abrahamic religions refer to God as he. In these religions, the portrayal of God being male can be traced back to the patriarchal societies which they originate from. Another reason is because he is the masculine pronoun. If you were to say womankind, you would be referring to all of women. If you were to say mankind, you would be referring to human beings collectively without reference to any sex. Hey fam, in today's video, we will be talking about why women cannot completely dissenter men. And here is the reason, because of religion. People have the opinion that women are going to find it difficult to dissenter men because there is no way you would say you're dissentering men and then you go back to your closet to pray to a God that is masculine. In Christianity and Islam, they refer to God as male. So people are arguing and saying that God is not gender specific. God is neither male nor female. While some people have the opinion that God is masculine, people are saying that the patriarchy made God a male. God had no idea when they made him male. God did not give consent to that. Anyways, this is an interesting topic. The conversation is a back and forth one. I believe you're going to enjoy it. Let's get started. You will never decenter men until you stop believing that the deity you worship is. She's right. Decentering men is much more than just decentering men on the physical plane. It's about decentering the idea that God is the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You see how they leave out woman in it, our feminine energy in it, and there cannot be a God without a female who is the creator, right? Decentering man is also about thinking that man should lead you like you are a, a sheep. Decentering man is also about working with your masculine energy that you have here. And so it's decentering man is not about going to the extreme, right? It's about finding the mid point. It's about coming into right relationship with your feminine energy and with your masculine energy. Why would the giver of life be a man? If anything, God would be both genders at once or none at all. Thank goodness, someone said it out loud. I literally struggled with religion for so long and once I stopped referring to higher powers as he, him, now I can believe, just didn't sit right before. Literally girl, the more I conceive of central high powers as gender neutral female, I felt more loved and cared for. Religion is masculine. This is why they tell you that God is a man. Because masculine mind men, it actually blocks you from your heart. Christianity was 100% written by men for men. It's amazing when some Christian women are not able to connect the dots. When they say all men wrote the Bible and they also write about men being closer to God, being above women. That is not a coincidence. That didn't just happen. If all men wrote the Bible, they're going to be writing it in favor of themselves. That is not a far-fetched thing to say. That's why I say things like equality and feminism don't go with Christianity. And a lot of Christian women get upset when I talk like this. And if that is the type of life you want to live below your husband, that's fine. I'm not saying you don't, you're not allowed to live that way. But I personally am not okay with being seen as a second class citizen, as being less than. I'm also not okay with the kind of relationship that breeds because I want a partner, somebody who makes decisions with me, not somebody who makes decisions for me. And I cannot begin to tell you the amount of times I've heard growing up, the man is the head of the household. He makes the decisions. He has the final say. I'm just the side character to his story. I'm just his sidekick. I'm not my own individual person with my own individual thoughts and decision making. They pretend like men are more logical, better leaders, better decision makers, and essentially say, you're a woman, know your place. Like I said, I know some people are okay with this or they think they're okay with it. I think that I, a lot of women in this sphere have been convinced that this is what they want. But when I think of a relationship or a marriage, I want a partnership, 
someone who is my partner, not my authoritative figure. My partner is not my parent. They aren't above me. They don't make decisions over me. They make decisions with me. And I think to pretend like they are above you and pretend like they are smarter, more logical, closer to God than you is doing yourself a disservice. There is a book of Mary Magdalene that wasn't included in the Bible. I was brought up learning how to serve my husband. Every conversation stayed with so you can do this for your husband instead of so you can be this. I remember hearing a woman that I respected proudly saying that she learned that her husband is everything and she exists for him. I feel like every one of us is a god in a way. We are the only ones responsible for our lives and we are going to flow with it. I am a Christian but I 100% agree with this video. My dad says all the time to my mom that he is the head of the house and it bugs me so bad. Why do we consider God to be a man? Throughout history, many religious traditions and texts have referred to God using masculine language or imagery. Abrahamic religions refer to God as he. In these religions, the portrayal of God being male can be traced back to the patriarchal societies which they originate from. Another reason is because he is the masculine pronoun. If you were to say womankind, you would be referring to all of women. If you were to say mankind, you would be referring to human beings collectively without reference to any sex. So since God is above all, God would be represented with the masculine pronoun he, because he at the most high is genderless. Now let's look at other concepts of God. The concept of God in Taoism isn't described the same way as it is in most religions. Rather than focusing on the existence of a deity, Taoism emphasizes the natural order of the universe, the cycle of yin and yang. Yin and yang represents the dualistic nature of the universe and the harmonious interplay of opposing forces. Now some religions emphasize a feminine aspect. Shaktism places great emphasis on the divine feminine aspect and considers Mahadevi the supreme godhead. In Gnosticism, there's a distinct hierarchy of supreme beings known as eons. These eons are often described as luminaries or emanations from the ultimate divine source. Sophia or wisdom is one of the prominent eons. She represents the feminine aspect of the divine. Now the Gnostic teachings of God's eons is very intricate. It deserved its own entire video, which I already did for y'all. All you have to do is go here. Gender happened to God without God's consent. Uh-huh. So, have you ever read the Bible where God willingly is born as a man? The Bible assigns maleness to God almost without fail, but at no point in Scripture does God ever say, I am male. Sir, are you denying God his preferred pronouns? That is not very inclusive. Is God's assigned gender based on anatomy? Well, yeah, because Jesus was a man, not a woman. Does God have a male body? Yeah. Isn't it more accurate and more biblical to say the three-in-one God is non-binary, omni-gender as they? No, because Jesus is a man, the Father is a father, and the Holy Spirit is also identified with masculine pronouns. You are welcome to agree, to like, or not, but assigning gender without consent? Full stop. Oh, I most certainly do not agree. And Pastor, if you ever get around to reading that old thing called the Bible, you'll see that God clearly identifies himself as a he. The main book of focus here is the Bible. Who wrote the Bible? People have different theories out there. Some people believe God wrote the Bible. Some people said people just put the book together with no divine assistance. Some people said the Holy Spirit directed the apostles to write the Bible. What I was taught growing up was that the apostles wrote the Bible with the direction of the Holy Spirit. If we're going with this particular one, it's clear that the Bible was written by men and women were not involved in it. Let's see what the internet has to say about this. Who wrote to the bible there are four different theories the first one says god wrote the bible second one says god inspired the writers conservative view the third one says god inspired the writers liberal view and these views have different accounts to how the bible came together then the last one said the people wrote the bible with no divine help all i can get from here is this is that the bible was written by 
men be it one man different men but the male gender wrote the bible the question here is this why are some books of the bible missing why didn't they include all that and why did we have just men in charge of writing the bible alone think about it here is a man trying to prove a point with a bible that was written by men that god is male and not gender neutral let's hear what he has to say numbers 23 19. It says, God is not a man. <laughs> very, very clear. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man. All right, let's address the Old Testament verses non-Christians use to argue Jesus cannot be God. They often pull these three verses. And their argument is, if the Bible says God is not a man, then Jesus, who is a man, cannot also be God. However, I find it funny that they like to cite these verses and not Exodus 15.3, which says the Lord is a man of war. And this is the same word for man we see in Numbers 23.19. Exodus 15.3 is in a song about God rescuing Israel from Egypt. And according to Christian theology, Jude says it was Jesus who saved Israel from Egypt. So because the verse says God is a man of war, maybe Christians could use this verse as a prophecy of the Incarnation. Now, I wouldn't make that argument, because I understand I'd be reading too much into the locution of the verse and ignoring the illocution, which is exactly what non-Christians do when they read too much into these verses. Because they're not defining God's ontology, they're telling us aspects of his character. Namely, that he's not lying, nor is he going to regret these decrees he made. It's like if I said I'm not a man who cheats, I'm not denying that I am human, I'm giving you an aspect of my character, namely that I'm monogamous. Or I could say I'm not a creature of habit. I'm not denying that I'm created and therefore claiming to be the creator. I'm giving you an aspect of my character as a created being. Likewise, the elocution of these verses is only telling us God is not a sinful human. This would not contradict the incarnation because when Jesus became man, he was sinless. The bottom line is non-Christians are reading way too much into these verses and ignoring the elocution and context. By their logic, we would also have to conclude Jesus as a plant because he says that he is the true vine. In the New Testament, very explicitly, according to Christians, Jesus is called the Son of Man. Right? And in the Old Testament, in the same Bible that we get, it very explicitly says that God is not a man, nor the Son of Man. This is another example of trying to read too much into the locution, the literal meaning of your words, and ignoring the illocution, the intended meaning. But it's also ignoring the fact that phrases change meaning over time and sometimes have multiple meanings. For example, the word seraph in the Bible is used of angelic beings, but also just simply snakes. In the Old Testament, the phrase son of man simply refers to a human, but in the New Testament, it's a messianic title because it's drawing on the book of Daniel. So when someone else or Jesus referred to himself as the Son of Man, they're not making a claim about his ontology or stating that he had a biological father and therefore denying the virgin birth. They are calling him the Messiah because that's what that phrase meant in the New Testament period. Again, if you're going to take this phrase literally, you have to deny the virgin birth and affirm that Jesus is literally the son of a biological male. I believe in God. I'm not religious. I believe God exists. I believe God created me. I believe God is in charge of the world. But I am not a religious person. Religion comes with a lot of controversies, drama, hypocrisy, and all that. The God I serve is not a God of confusion. Because the man that just finished speaking, he sounded confused with his explanation and he was contradicting himself back and forth. God cannot be saying he's not a man and then he is a man. I don't know what's going on there. Anyways, let's hear what this Muslim man has to say with his own explanation. If Allah is genderless, why is it only appropriate to refer to him as he or him? Good question, and there's a lot to unpack here. The first is that people have a lot of confusion between the concept of natural gender and the concept of grammatical gender. So uh, natural gender refers to like a, a an animal with male organs is male, an animal with female organs is female. We get that. Grammatical gender is based on language convention, and that's a little bit different. So in languages like Arabic or even languages like French, every single noun is either masculine or feminine. In French, for example, the, the word for a chair is feminine. In Arabic, the word for a chair, kursi, is masculine. It doesn't mean that the chair is literally male or female. This is just the convention of the language. Likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referred to 
at, with the grammatical masculine, not that he is naturally masculine. There's a difference between these two, and that's something that's really important to understand. Uh, the problem where things get blurred is in a language like English, where there are words that are gender neutral, like the word it. So people start to do something where they anth anthropomorphize God, where they try to treat God like a human being, right? They don't ask why is the chair male or female, they ask why is God he or her. And the reason is because they're treating Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like a human being, which is completely against our religion. Uh, the other thing to understand is Arabic, the default is the masculine. You know, sometimes people ask why do male Arabic male singers always sing Habibi, Habibi? Are they singing to other men or are they singing to other women? Who are they in love with? And the reason is because the Arabic language, the masculine is the default. Whereas if you were to make something feminine, you would actually be specifying the gender to it in many cases. Not in every context, but in many cases. And so when they keep the terminology in the masculine, it actually refers to the males and the females. But if they were to make it feminine, then it would only refer to men. Right? So if they wanted women to sing along, it made sense to keep it in the masculine because then both men and women could use it. Uh, and it's important to understand that the concept of grammatical gender is not misogynistic. It does not like say that one thing is better than the other, right? So Al Mutanabbi, one of the great scholars of the Arabic language and poets, he said, uh, he said that uh, making the, the sun feminine is not a flaw and making the moon masculine is not fakhr, is not a source of pride. And so that's some important points to understand when we answer this question. Okay guys, this is all I have for you guys in this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for your support so far. I'm so sorry that I've not been keeping up with the comments. It was not done intentionally. Moving forward, I'll do my best to reply or to show love on every comment. Thank you so much for your love and I don't take that for granted. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching and bye.